Today I'll show you how to make the perfect sugar-free egg custard. It's so satiny smooth creamy and delicious I think you'll be surprised how easy it is to make. So let's go ahead and get started on this truly excellent dessert. And one of the cool things about egg custard is just how easy it is to scale up and down depending on how much you want. The easy to remember rule is one egg per one cup of milk. I'll be making a two egg custard here today. And to sweeten our custard, we can use whatever we want, stevia, monk fruit, sugar, or what I'm gonna be using today, ethritol. And for that, we'll need about one fourth of a cup per one cup of milk. If I'm using regular sugar, I'll use a little bit less. And if we wanna add more flavor, like say a little bit of lemon oil, this would be a good time. I'm not going to, I'm just saying you could. And another cool thing about this type of egg custard, we don't need any fancy equipment. Just get a whisk and a bowl and get that all whipped together. Once it's thoroughly combined and we can't see any more little streaks of egg, go ahead and add one teaspoon of vanilla and two cups of whole milk. Now we just wanna whisk that all together two or three minutes until most of our sweetener dissolves. Once we're happy with that, it's time to pour this into a dish. Now we can use just about any kind of dish we want. I'm using a nine inch pie plate today, just lightly oiled. Just keep in mind it should be a dish that you can fit into another dish because we're gonna cook this in a water bath. And for a very traditional finish to the perfect egg custard, we just wanna sprinkle on a little bit of ground nutmeg. How much is totally up to you. Now we just wanna gently lift this into a 300 degree oven. Now I like to actually preheat my water bath with the oven. I just find that easier than trying to pour boiling hot water in here after the oven preheats. Now for this setup, we wanna cook for about an hour. The key is you wanna see that jiggle in the middle. If you don't like with this one where it looks much more firm while it's still in the oven, that's overcooked. It'll still be good, but it won't have that velvety smooth texture that we're looking for. So be sure and check it and pull it out while it still has that characteristic wobble. We do need to let it cool for at least 10 minutes to finish setting, but this can be served warm or cold. Personally, I like mine chilled in the fridge the next day. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below, subscribe, and hit that little bell so you don't miss our future videos. And check out one of our other awesome recipes on the screen now. This has been Graham with a passion for food.